class, Chef Twa here. Uh, we're on week one and we are in cake design and decorating. And there's a reason why we call it cake design, um, not just cake decorating, because this is more than just about cake decorating for this class. It's also about um, planning ahead of time and designing your, your piece. And even when it comes to something as simple as what I'm doing today, you know, I had to mise en place. I had, oops, sorry, I had to mise en place everything. I had to make sure that I had everything accounted for. I'm kind of planning things in my head, like, okay, what what surface am I going to use to show you guys for this, you know, video? And so it's the same idea, same concept. You apply that same mentality coming into designing a cake. And so when you're designing a cake, you're thinking about. Okay, well, what colors, what themes, um, what size, what kind of tear am I making? Um, even just something as simple as, you know, what, what's the size I'm doing and how much space do I have to write a certain message? And this class is, you know, going to teach you how to sketch out your designs as well. And so just kind of like our plate, contemporary plate of dessert, right? In PA221, we sketched out our plate with our components, with the details, with everything that we're going to um, create for that week six final um, assignment. Same idea here, but yet you're doing it on a weekly basis. And so this week, the design's already made out for you. We're doing sunflowers, we're doing um, pearl borders for your cake. It's just simply learning how to crumb coat, how to um, get really nice straight edges to your cake and decorating the cake and then creating the sunflower um, look and also piping congratulations on the cake, right? And so I kind of want to show you guys when it comes to piping congratulations, like chocolate writing, um, how it works. It's not so easy just saying pipe, melt some chocolate, make a cornet and pipe out congratulations. It's not that easy, right? And so I really want to get down to the detail of how I'm holding it, the pressure and um, how I plan on making it centered and what happens when I don't make it centered, like a mistake, right? But you can always fix those mistakes. And so that's what today it's gonna be all about and we're gonna get a zoom up on everything. So after you make the cornet and you fill it with the chocolate, you wanna make sure that you have a very, very thin tip, okay? The reason why you want it very thin, especially when you're writing on your cake is because the flow of the chocolate is just gonna keep coming out. Even with how thin I have it right here, if I put it like this, it's already still dripping, right? And that's okay. You still want it to, just as long as it's nice and thin and that it's controllable. And so it's all about pressure. And so usually the pressure is usually pushed on the top right here. You kind of have um, your two fingers right here as a guidance. You have your thumb as the pressure. And so this kind of holds the um, cornet. This part right here pushes against the cornet to get that even flow. And so when you're piping, you want it to flow where there's not when it just goes like this. No matter how hard you push, if it's going like this, that means your hole, the hole, the um, the hole at the tip may be a little bit clogged, or you need it to be a little bit bigger by cutting just off a little tiny bit. But it's best not to cut it at this point because you do want it to be extremely thin. Okay, and so when you start piping. It's all about gravity. You don't want to pipe so close to the paper that you're basically scribbling it on, right? You want gravity to do all the work by just simply giving it space on top and get that nice even flow. And as soon as you continue to push and you kind of get an idea of how your flow goes, that let go, close it, it stops, push, nice even flow, a very nice thin thread like that, okay? And once you get that, just kind of do some cute little designs. Like if it's breaking like that, that means you need more pressure. So you want a little bit more pressure to kind of get your design, right? And same thing with writing. If you're not going to get enough pressure, it's going to break. And as you're piping, it just kind of breaks apart because there's not enough pressure. So you want equal pressure to get your design. Okay, practice that a little bit before you start to write. When you start to write, same idea, same concept. Keep the space between the base, the bottom right here, the parchment paper or your cake, and you're piping. And you're kind of tracing as you see, right? And so, let's say you had a template that says congratulations. Don't follow the letters so closely, right? Kind of let the chocolate flow and then follow how 
that goes, right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you my right. And so when this happens right here where it closes up, that means your chocolate's very thin. It may need to be a little bit cooler before I pipe this. And so if I wait just a little bit, it might get a little bit easier to pipe because it's just super, super warm right now. So it's a little bit harder to pipe. But while I'm waiting, I'm gonna refresh this real quick. All right, so let my chocolate cool just a little bit. Um, usually the tip cools much faster, so it could clog up right there. So if that clogs up, just push a little bit of the chocolate outwards and then clean the tip and then it pushes out the area that has solidified and so it reopens up that tip right there. So when you're piping, giving it that space. You can stop if you like. If you need breaking points in your letter, do it, okay? She's gotta find the right stopping point. So, I'll tell you now I'm not the best at writing, but I'm really great with filigree. But writing, I think, is definitely a little bit more complicated. If you need to do print, then do it first, okay? Um, cursive already on its own is complicated. And sometimes when you have your letters very close, it does close up in certain areas. And so that just means that you might need even a finer, finer tip than this because there's too much chocolate coming out. And so you might even have to move quicker. Let's try that a second time, uh, a second time and see if I can move quicker, because the quicker you move, the thinner the um, chocolate is. Can see the difference? That this one's thicker a lot of like the a's and the o's just kind of start to close up but when i write a little quicker it's a little bit thinner which makes the letters a little bit more distinguished and so this is giving you all the space that you need to write and so i recommend practicing on the parchment paper before you practice on your cake i have a little five inch circle or cake pan that i'm just going to practice on and i need to write congratulations on this so this one is going to be very, very small and very tight and very hard to write. And even now, um, even the most professional cake decorators have trouble with the smaller cakes for sure. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys that because I was so scared of using up the space because the word is so big, I started at the very end and I ended up going very small that I ended up having too much space over here. If that's the case, that's okay, right? You can put your sunflowers on the side. You can put your sunflowers in a way where it's, you know, um, let's imagine your sunflowers are on this edge right here. I do have some of the buttercream that we use. So I'm just gonna do some rosettes. Okay, and then that fills up that side. I mean, these are accidents that you can make into, you know, a design. And they still end up filling up really beautifully. You can imagine this being on a cake. Like, oh my goodness, I wrote congratulations too small. What am I gonna do with that empty side? fill it up with flowers or do something with it, right? You can make it work. So I'm gonna write congratulations on this and try to center it as much as I can. Yep. 
and then sometimes those air bubbles happen. When that happens, you always have a piece of paper on the side so you can squeeze out whatever air you have in there or squeeze out the extra chocolate. But you can always go back, fix that. And this one's a little bit more centered. And this is where you can have your flowers on, you know, on different areas of the cake or kind of center it a little bit. Um, let's see, I'm gonna try to do a little bit more asymmetrical. It's all about flower placement. And it's all about kind of working around the lettering. Sometimes you have to work the lettering around the design. That also is a very common situation that you have to deal with. But as you get better and a little bit more practice, it becomes easier to work with. Imagine that on the cake. So going into the buttercream, uh, what we're trying to do this week is do the rounded border, okay? And so you do use a round tip for that. And I want to show you kind of different techniques you can use. It's all going to be the same kind of movement, but it kind of gives you different effects too. So if you kind of, if you start piping and pull, pipe and pull, which most people pipe and pull and it just kind of creates very simple, kind of like, I say, kind of like a teardrop. Pressure, let go, pressure, let go, pull. Then you can see how that ended tip right there ended up not being coming long enough. So what you want to do is pressure, pull, as you still have the same pressure, okay? And then you start at that same part right there, pull. And so the board that you're going to be doing, as you get better at piping, you can kind of create a little bit, oh, let's see, a little bit of pressure where you get a pretty good flow of how your border is going to look, right? But let's say you want to do just little round borders, kind of see how I'm moving. Um, I go kind of like counterclockwise to kind of pull away the tip because if I don't and I go like that, it kind of creates the Hershey's tip. But then you, if you go like this and you turn it real quick, this and then turn it real quick, it kind of takes away that that little Hershey's kiss look. It's the same thing here. So you just keep doing it. And you'll notice that it kind of pulls into like a pearl design. So practice that, right? Even I'm practicing as I'm doing this. Like I'm trying to remember different designs or different looks. And if I really want it to look just like pearls and just look really perfect rounded circles, then you don't want to be too close because then it kind of pushes out too much pressure against the, the cake or against the pan. And it just ends up kind of being like a blob rather than a circle. To keep that sphere Again, space just like the chocolate. You want to give space from the tip to the, 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 the base of the cake right here. Right, stop. Counterclockwise, pull. Push, stop, the pressure. Counterclockwise, pull. Pressure, stop. Push. Not push, I'm sorry, the, the swirl. And so I do want to get a little bit more of a close-up for you. So I'm going to show you that pearl design again, okay? So it's... I don't know if you can see that one. Let's see right here. Perfect. Pressure. Let go. Counterclockwise. Pressure. Let go. Counterclockwise. 
That's how you create the perfect little pearls. Remember, if you go a little bit too close, this is what's gonna happen. You end up with these, and you don't do the counterclockwise things, it doesn't look as nice. You want it to be really nice round pearls. So these are more like flat looking blobs. So I'm gonna do this again, just to show you guys. And it's okay you have those little tertiary tips. You can always kind of push those back in. And to do the rounded border where it's like a, a chain rather than like piping individual ones like I just did here. You can go counterclockwise or clockwise. I just kind of noticed I was doing a little bit of both. So clockwise it's just kind of whatever your hand motion is used to and also whether you're left-handed or right-handed that counterclockwise or clockwise is easier for you see those are the individual pearls but to do the rounded border where it's connecting where it's like a chain reacting you're kind of creating a little teardrop and from that teardrop, you cover the base of that teardrop and do it again. You pull. Pressure, pull. Pressure, pull. Pressure, pull. Pressure, pull. Pressure, pull. And as you get better at it, it can be much quicker as you do it. Where you can go. You know, that's me being very close to the cake and can just see how it flattens out. Give it a little space. Let's see how that turned out. Practice in lines first. That's going to help too. You just go straight lines. Same idea, but in the future when you want to practice different shapes and designs, you use the same movement, but then do the different tips. This is a star tip right here, and so same movement as this one right here. Right? The different design. And so same movement for this one, instead of doing rounds, I'm doing little rosettes. Pipe, turn, pipe, turn. See how that looks? So that was more like a zoom up, but I kind of wanted you to also see the motion, like just of me piping, that of how I'm using my piping bag. So, same pressure right here from the top, pushing downwards. Pressure, downwards, pull. Pressure up, swirl, pull. And so you're kind of creating kind of like a shell when you're piping this. So pressure, pull, pressure, pull, pressure, pull. And that ended up giving me a really nice bottom right there. See that? It's a little bit too bright. Maybe you can see it. Eh, trying. I'm trying to, sorry. So let's do this right here. So same thing with the circle tip, which is what you're doing for your cake this week. Pressure, pull, pressure, pull, pressure, pull, pressure, pull, pressure, and pull. See the movement? That's going to give you that consistency. And you can have a little bit more breaks in between, or you can keep it a little bit closer to make it look a little bit more pearl-like.
Okay, and then individual pearls work too. versions. A little hard to see. I feel like it's maybe too bright. The reflection at least. I'm going to do a little flower design real quick. Let's say the cake shop already has this design. Now you're limited to the space that you have to write. But at this point, after much more practice and the more you become um, even better at writing, you're able to kind of figure out the space and you can kind of visually see it. And it comes with muscle memory. So I'm going to write, hi mom, on it <laughs> real quick just because it's so tiny. Let's see. So you start to kind of work with the space that you have, depending on the design that the bakery already has. And like I said, it comes with time, it comes with practice. 